In this video, I'm going to show you how I edited and color coded this image right here. And we are not going to be using color separation. Let's jump right into it. So if you know me, you know I use Capture One to process my raw file. So this is Capture One. I'm going to use Capture One to process and color grade the raw file before actually editing it inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to change the profile of this picture to standard because when I shot this image, my camera profile was on standard. So to do that set of Capture One, I'm going to come to my color and just come to this ICC profile under the base characteristic. Click on this Nikon Z5 generic and just change it to standard right here. So immediately I change it to standard, you can see the colors are now popping. This was the before and the after. The before and the after. So basically we've started color grading this image already. Now next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come to my adjust and just add a new empty adjustment layer under the layer tab. Click on this drop that icon and add a new empty adjustment layer. Okay, now after that, I'm going to scroll the way down to my exposure and just increase the exposure a little bit. Add contrast a little bit. Scroll the way down to highlights. Bring down the highlights a little bit, just a tiny bit, as you can see, minus 13. Also, take down the blacks inside and open up the shadow a little bit like so all right so let like this work so my feel is too much i'm going to take the shadow inside a little bit like so now see the before and the after the before and the after the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to crop this image inside of capture one i can decide to crop it inside of photoshop but since i have room i'm just going to crop it inside of capture one before actually taking this image to photoshop now to copy your image, just click on this crop tool right here and just click on 4x5 because I want to post this image to Instagram. So 4x5 works. I'm just going to crop it like this and just try to rotate it a little bit. Okay. I don't like the way it is. I think I'm just going to crop it inside of Photoshop. So I'm not going to undo the cropping and just crop it inside of Photoshop because I want to extend it a bit. Now to open this image inside of Photoshop, I'm going to right click on the image Click on Edit With and click on Adobe Photoshop right here. Now for me, I'm going to be using 16 bits and just use PSD and hit Edit Variants. Now this image will automatically open inside of Photoshop for us. Once this image opens inside of Photoshop, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate my background layer by pressing on Command J or Control J. After that, I'm just going to crop the image. So to crop the image inside of Photoshop, I'll pick my crop tool, change the ratio to 4 by 5 and just move this part here a little bit and also rotate it like this. Now if you have access to the AI, I prefer to use the AI because it gives a more accurate result. So once I crop it, I'm going to click on Generative Expand. If you can't find your contextual tax bar, alright, so just click on Windows, click on contextual tax bar right here and just going to open for you like this. Or you can come to this field, under this field, you're going to see background, generative response, or content away. So generative response works for me, I'm going to click on OK. So you can see we have three variations. This is the first variation, the second variation, and the third variation. So I think this first variation works for me, I'm going to use this one. All right. Now after this, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove my assistant's hand, so this shade drag. So I'm going to remove the hand. I'm going to add a new empty adjustment layer. Pick my remove tool. Click on this generative AI and just turn it on. And just paint on the hand. And also this Kobo fog machine right here. So this is a new fog machine and I made a review about it. If you want to watch that video, I'll be leaving the link in the show below. Once I make a selection, I'm going to click on Okay, and let's just wait for it to load. It's just going to remove the hand for me. And the result is really amazing because we are using AI to remove it. All right, it has finished loading. See the before and the after. But if I zoom in, you can see it's leaving some lines right there. And I don't want those lines. So what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to pick more of my selection brush tool. When I click on my selection brush tool, I'm just going to paint on those lines and just use generative field to just fill those parts. All right, so I'm going to click on generative field. 
and just click on generate i just going to remove those lines and just make everything blend for me all right so this is the first version the second version and the third version so i think i like this third version more it looks so much better now what i'm going to do i'm just going to merge everything i've done so to merge with the first layer selected hold shift click on layer one and press your command e or control e to merge so let's say our before and after this is the before and after our before and after now to retouch the skin of this image remember i told you i did not use focus separation to retouch the skin what i use is the retouch of me ai and the reblum ai now let me show you how it works you are going to see the result is really amazing and natural so that's what i use to retouch this particular image so to remove blemishes using the retouch of me after you've installed it and by the way if you want the retouch of me check the link in the below of this video all right so come to filter come to retouch on me and you are going to see heal right here so heal is to remove blemishes i'm going to click on retouch on me heal and it's just going to load as you can see it's really fast it has finished loading so i'm just going to zoom in so you can see the before and the after okay take a look at the image see the before and the after the before and the after the before and the after it just removed the blemishes for us so from here i'm going to click on apply now next i'm going to do from here i'm going to be using the retouch of me to do my micro dodge and burn because that's what i want to use to retouch this image micro dodge and burn now to do that i want to create a stand visible layer but it's not command option shift e or control shift alternate e once i create that stand visible layer i'm going to come to my filter again come to retouch on me and just click on dodge and burn right here once I click on Dodge and Bomb, the Dodge on Me will automatically do my Micro Dodge and Bomb for me. So it's just going to brighten those dark parts and darken those bright parts to make the image look smooth. So let's just wait for it to load right now so we can see the before and the after. It has finished loading. Let me just zoom in. Alright, so see the before and the after. The before and the after. And if you feel it's not enough, you can just move the blend up like this and also move the warmth up like this but right now i feel it's looking too much so i'm going to take the blend down a little bit about 120 so the before and the after the before and the after and from here i'm going to turn on this soft light layer and hit apply so you can see where this is the micro dodge above for us now from here i'm going to change the blend mode from normal to soft light and i'm just going to group my retouch on me so you can see the before and the after this is the before and the after the before and the after now to make this image smooth even more i'm going to be using another photoshop ai plugin which is called the reblum retouch so to use that i'm going to create another stand visible layer by pressing on command option shift e or control shift on it e if you're using the windows after that i'm going to come to my filter again come to reblum retouch and just click on reblum retouch right here so for the reblum retouch we have two options if you don't want the effect to be strong, you can use the natural right here. And if you want the effect to be strong, you can use the fashion. And also you have two sliders to control. You have the general slider and you have the texture slider. So the general slider is for the dodge and burn, the amount of dodge and burn you want. While the texture slider is for the amount of texture you want to remove or keep on your image. All right, so let's just wait for it to load. Now that it's loading, I want to leave a link where you can watch a full review of how the Reblum works and also a full review on how the Retouch on Me actually works. Okay, it's still loading. Now, if you plan to get the Retouch on Me, I advise you get the heal and the Dodge Bomb first. And if you have money to spend, you can also get the Balance Cleanup. But it's quite expensive. So I only advise you get the Retouch on Me if you are making money off photography and retouching. Also, I want to leave a link where you can get this Reblum retouch. And if you use that link, you can retouch unlimited image for one week. And after one week, if you like the Reblum retouch and you want to buy it, you can, okay, it has finished loading. If you like the Reblum retouch and you want to buy it, you can actually pay for it. But if you use that link in shop below, you're going to get, you're going to retouch unlimited image for one week. All right, it has finished loading. Let's see the before and after. So I'm just going to zoom in, take a look at it. You can see how smooth and how good this image is looking already. So. See the before you blum, after you blum. The before and the after. Before and the after. And from here, I'm just going to click on OK. 
Now, let me group both my Reblom with Touch and the Touch of me so you can see how good this image is looking. So, this can save you a lot of time, gives you professional results and also retouch faster. So, take a look at the image, see the before and the after. It has removed the blemishes for us and also smoothened out the skin for us. The before and the after. The before and the after. Now, next thing I'm going to do, if you look at this image, you can see the eyebrows are not visible. So, I'm going to add artificial eyebrows to it. So to do that, I'm going to create a new empty layer. Once I create a new empty layer, I'm going to come to my brush tool. And by the way, if you need my custom brush tool, I will also be leaving the link where you can get it for free in the description of this video. So once you come to your brush tool, after you've installed it, click on your brush, scroll the way down. You are going to see two lens brushes and you're going to see eyebrow one. So click on it. Once you click on it, make sure your foreground color is set to black and just zoom in on your image. Reduce the brush size to fit like this and just paint once like this. Now to transform it, to make it fit, just press the command T or control T to bring the transform tool and just rotate it to fit. All right. So you can also change the perspective if you want to do that. So right click, click on perspective and just play with the perspective to make it fit even more. All right. So let's see the before and after. See the before. And the after so i'm going to take it up a little bit all right so this works the before and the after i'm also going to move this part down a little bit click on the start click on warp rather sorry not the start and just move this part down a little bit like this all right hit okay now see the before and the after from here i feel it's looking too much so i'm just going to reduce the opacity or opacity so about, let's use 50, 50 works, the before and the after. Then I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing on Command J and just put it on this other side. And you can see right now, if I click OK, I have to flip it. So to flip it, I'm going to press on Command T and just flip it like this. All right. Or if you don't have your contextual tags bar, if you want to flip, you can just press on Command T to put it on to right click. And you can flip horizontal like so and just resize it to fit remember right click again click on perspective and just try to match the perspective you can also wrap it right click click on wrap and just wrap it to fit like so i think i'm going to move it up a little bit so i'm going to press our command c and just move it up like this okay now, if you want to remove the SS, what you can do, you can just add the layer mask. Once you add the layer mask, come to your brush tool again, switch to a normal soft hand brush. Once you switch to your soft hand brush, you can actually remove the SS. All right, so let's see the before and after. For the eyebrows, see the before and the after. The before and the after. I'm going to reduce the opacity of this group. I feel it's too much. All right, so let this work for me. Another thing I'm going to do, I don't like this dark I'm seeing right here, so I'm not going to remove it. To remove it, I'm going to add a new empty layer. Pick my remove tool and just paint on this right here. Also, this blemish is here. I don't like it. I'm going to remove it. Paint on this. Also, paint on this tray here. And instead of using AI, I'm going to turn off AI and just click on OK. And it's just going to remove as you can see. Now let's see the before and after, see the before and after, the before and the after. So next I'm going to do, I'm going to group everything I've done so far. By selecting the first layer, hold shift, click on layer 2, which is the last layer above the background layer, press on command G to group. Now once I group, I want to blur the background a little bit. Now to blur the background, I want to add a new empty layer. I'll pick my mixer brush tool. Once I pick my mixer brush tool, I'm just going to brush I make sure my sample layer is selected. Once my sample layer is selected, I'm just going to brush on the background just to mix the color, thereby blurring it. All right, so I'm just going to blur it like this. Okay, because I don't want to blur the smoke. That's why I'm using it like this. So instead of selecting the subject and just blur everything, I want to blur specific parts of the background. So that's why I created a new empty layer and just pick my mixer brush tool and just blur specific parts of the image all right so let's blur this part as well so basically we are mixing color and just blurring 
the background. Let this work for me. Let's see the before and the after. Take a look at the background. See the before and the after. The before and the after. I think I'm going to miss the color right here even more. Okay. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open this image set of camera roll and just push the color and just color it and just enhance the color. All right. So I'm going to create a stand visible layer. Remember, come out of shift E and control shift alternate E. Now for color grading, you don't actually have to be dramatic or push like that too much. Just try to balance the existing color. Because a lot of people ask me how I colorate my image, how I colorate my image. I don't really know the answer to give. What I always tell them is I just balance my colors. I actually don't do anything dramatic. You can see the only color adjustment that I did inside of Capture One. I just come here and just change the base characteristic from generic to standard. That was the first color grading I did. And you can see it just boosts the colors of the color. So you don't have to do too much for colors. Now, inside of camera roll, you are going to see this slide adjustment I'm going to make just to boost or balance the existing color. Once I create a stamp visible layer, I'm going to go to my filter, click on camera roll filter. Now, once my camera roll filter open, the first thing I do, I scroll all the way down to calibration. Now, under the calibration, we are going to see the blue primary. Under the blue primary, I just move the saturation of the blue primary up. See if I take it all the way to 100%. You can see it just boosts the colors. You can see how the color is popular right now. The before and the after. The before and the after. But right now, I feel it's looking too much. So I'm going to take it all the way down to about 50. All right. Now, you can see how it just boosts the color. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll the way up and come to vibrance and take the vibrance up a little bit like so. So this is the only thing I'll do inside of camera roll see the before and the after the before and the after and i'm okay with the color let's want to change color i can come to a hue saturation and luminous right here under the color mixer and for the saturation if i want to boost the blues i can come to the blues and just move it up and just going to increase saturation of the blues but i'm not going to be doing that also if i want to change the color of the blues i can come to the hue and just play with the blues and it's just going to change the colors of the blues but I'm not going to be doing that. But if you want to do that, this is how you can do it. What I usually do for here, I think the highlights on the face is looking too much. So I come to my luminous. And since it's going to consist of oranges and reds and yellows, mostly oranges, I can just decrease the luminous of the oranges to reduce a bit of shine on the face like so. All right? See the before and the after. The before and the after. Now looking at it, I feel this blue primary I added is looking too much. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit, like so. And just come to this um, hue or saturation and luminous and reduce the saturation of the blue a little bit. I feel it's looking too much, like so. And this works for me. Now, see the before and the after. The before and the after. You can see I just boost and balance the existing color. So this is how I color grade my images. Now for me, I want to click on Okay, now let's see the before and after inside of Photoshop. See the before and the after. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to fade it a little bit. Now to fade, I'm going to come to my adjustment layer. Click on Curves Adjustment Layer. Add a dot on the shadow parts. Another one on the mid-tones. Another one on the highlights. And come to my shadow and just move it up. So if I take it all the way up like this, you can see the effect is looking too much. So I'm going to add just a little bit of it. So I'm going to take it up slight bits just to fade it a little bit like this all right so like this works see the before and the after and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to add digital noise to this image so i click on my action i click on noise right here i'm just going to add noise to the image now let's see the before and after this is the before and the after now i feel it's looking too much so i'm just going to reduce the opacity or opacity like so Let's use 20, 20 works, the before and the after. Now finally, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to group everything I did and show you where we started from and where we are right now. So take a look at the image, see the before and the after. So this is how I edited this image from start to finish without focus separation. And I made a lasting breakdown video on how I got this shot right here. And if you want to watch how I got this shot in light breakdown, you can check out this video right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.